I was sailing in the middle of the darkness at 2 a.m. in the Nordic winter, and then I heard that terrible beep. My systems shut off, batteries at 0%. I could only see that red dreadful light, and I was able, luckily, to make it to the closest island and find a safe harbor. It was pretty scary, but in hindsight, that's a good experience, because now I saw what happens when the systems completely shut off, they will still turn back on if you have a bit of sunlight coming, so the next morning I could see systems restoring and batteries starting to charge again. Welcome to mission log 4 of my hand-built solar-powered yacht that I'm currently sailing away from the cold and sunless winter of the north through the canals of Europe into the warmth of the Mediterranean. Today we're gonna take a look at some performance specifics and the details of the build as well as get you a full room tour. So the Helios 11 is a roughly 35 foot, 11 meter long, 2 and 40 meters wide monohull constructed out of plywood and reinforced with glass fiber. Because of the need to have a lot of area for solar panels, the cabin is naturally very large. 7 meters from the back all the way to the front window here, we have standing space and a cabin width of 2.4 meters. That means that we have roughly 20 square meters and that is comparable to a small flat. And conveniently, this is a flat that you can take anywhere. The living room, or the hall as they call it, is the most cozy of them all. You can see it's already taking shape, even though I don't even have all the details in place yet. I'm quite in a hurry to get to warmer climates, so I've only put together these simple sofas here, gotten some high quality pillows made out of duck feathers, and here we have the ultra lightweight dining and work table. Underneath the sofas we got plenty of storage. The kitchen is small and simple. Everything is designed to be lightweight to increase the performance. Here we're still gonna put something to cover that up. We have a fridge here, we have the one kilowatt battery station for appliances, here the sink, some water. Toilets aren't that very interesting, so let's head into the bedroom instead. This right here, gentlemen, is perhaps the biggest bedroom you could find on an 11 meter yacht. We got a queen sized bed and plenty of storage. On a solar yacht design such as this one, there's no bulky constructions such as fittings for masts or keels, so it leaves a lot of room for, well, room. Even the bedroom and the captain's cabin is full standing height. I'm 180 and we still get plenty of extra space here. Now let's get to the quite unconventional location where we pilot this vessel. Right at the front of the yacht, roughly 7 meters from the aft, I drive the boat and I have excellent visibility. It's a bit of a bumpy ride at times, but the V-hull is fairly sharp, so most of the time it's a very smooth ride. This room still requires a lot of finishing, I was in a hurry to get out of the winter. We have a ridiculous plywood steering wheel here, we got my XPS foam chair and just a lot of stuff here laying around waiting to be placed in the right location. There's a bit of sunshine today. Here on the outside we got a roughly 4 square meter sun deck. Currently it is covered by additional solar panels I've laid out here. These produce a total of 600 watts and I still have to create some sort of construction for them. I think that concludes the room tour. Let me know in the comments what you would add and what you would change in order to turn this into a true luxury yacht. Now let's move into the specifics of this build and how I was able to create this in six months. It's a simple build with strong hull integrity. No holes created out of strong marine rated plywood. 9mm sheets are used for low to mid areas and 6mm sheets 
for higher surface errors such as the roof and the tops of the sides. I've placed rigid and reinforced bulkheads every one meters. The hull is reinforced by the strongest biaxial glass fiber weave over the entire bottom. Two layers of 500 grit glass and four layers on the keel line and on all edges. This makes the hull very strong considering the lightweight build. When I hit something, the boat will simply bounce off. The only weakness is the puncture resistance only being moderate. Now let's move over to the part everybody's been waiting for, the performance. Based on my field tests here in the Nordic winter with barely any sunlight, I can make some conservative estimates ranging from 4 knots to 8.5 knots of long-range cruise speed that definitely surpasses everything else you could get out of a standard 11-meter sailing vessel of one ton. So what is the secret of this incredible performance even at such an unoptimized stage? The fairly long and narrow hull is one of the secrets. The width at the beam at the waterline is 2.2 meters and the waterline length is slightly above 10 meters. Due to its lightweight and slender hull, the Helios 11 has a ridiculously low displacement resistance and barely leaves any wake behind it. And we're just talking about the simple V-hull here that is sharp at the bow and getting flatter toward the stern. Just imagine what performance we can get out of an optimized version with a highly professional, better design. Potentially more round shapes that are gonna reduce the drag roughly by 5 to 10%. Additionally, a professionally made version would have a perfect finish on the bottom fairer and smoother final paint job and that would further decrease the resistance and increase the speed. So the future concept would have a total combined reduction in relative drag from finish, better hull shape, better aerodynamics by an estimated 25%. Combine this with better solar panels, lighter batteries, increased efficiency of engines and most importantly a much longer waterline of 15 meters. Imagine the power. The 15 meter class of True North yachts will have a long range cruise speed of 9 knots and sustained maximum speed of 15 knots with the technology of two years in the future. So gentlemen, this is the future I'm sailing toward with the Helios 11 prototype. Imagine completely silent rides, infinite range, infinite energy. You don't even have to be sailing, no lifting sails, no wet nights, only comfortable elite level rides in your warm cockpit as you're heading towards an absolutely sovereign and free future. I'm glad you watched this video, stay tuned for Mission Log 5 by subscribing and as always, don't forget to get out there!